Now, I know what you're probably thinking. You're probably asking yourself if I actually like this episode. Now, liking it might be a bit of a stretch, but it isn't the worst thing in the world, like some Stranger Things fans might make you think. Regardless of how hard I'm going to try and defend and also make note of all the issues and how this episode could have been improved, I do think the episode is the weakest of the entire show. When creating this episode, the Duffer brothers essentially had to create a second pilot that introduces a whole new league of characters. It's insanely hard to do such a thing, and not many shows have ever done it, for very good reasons. Pilots themselves are insanely hard to do, but to make a second pilot in the middle of a season, especially when the previous episode ended on a cliffhanger, is not the smartest thing to do. The only show that I've seen so far that can basically have a second pilot and succeed is How I Met Your Mother with probably its best episode, How Your Mother Met Me. That episode, like The Lost Sister, came in between a huge cliffhanger and technically killed the momentum of the show. I think the difference is, is that the mother was a fan favorite while Kali only had a small scene in chapter 1 and nothing else until this episode. How Your Mother Met Me was somewhat of a second pilot, but it already went off mostly established characters so it felt more seamless. That was the biggest problem. It's that we had a second pilot filled with characters that weren't at all established. The only thing we knew about these characters before this episode was that they had trouble with the law and that Kali was the closest thing Eleven had to a sister. With the mother, even though it was amazing finally getting to see her, her getting established and us growing attached to her helped. Had the mother been introduced in this episode and not in previous episodes, it would have had the same issues that the lost sister had. It doesn't help that the audiences hated the supporting characters with Kali. While I do agree with the hate these characters get to some extent, I understand why they're there. To Kali, this is her Hawkins crew, a cast of nobodies that the world has shit on for their entire lives, and her being there helps them. However, the difference between Kali and Eleven and how they use their powers is that Kali uses hers for revenge, while Eleven uses hers to protect. It makes Kali the dark side of the coin, while Eleven is closer to the light side. Again, I don't like these supporting characters as their acting and just how they are as people are extremely annoying, but I feel they are necessary to establish Kali and Eleven's journey. Because of these characters feeling extremely out of place for Stranger Things, a lot of people see this as a filler episode, and on rewatches and potentially people's first time through the show, they might skip this episode, when that is a horrible thing to do. Eleven meeting Kali was something I think makes a lot of sense, as despite being close to everyone in the Hawkins group, none of them truly understand the types of trauma she has gone through. It also finally gives her the chance to do things on her own and not be isolated from the world, either in Hawkins' lab, Mike's house, or Hopper's house. Without her taking the leap and escaping, she wouldn't have learned the lessons from Kali that help her eventually close the gate in Chapter 9. We do know now that she used a similar tactic in Season 4 to defeat Henry in a flashback, but after those events, it's highly likely that Eleven either had a stroke or Dr. Brenner erased her memory so that she could be his only test subject. This explains why she has to relearn these tactics, but sadly, we as the audience already know about this, so it makes this episode feel even more out of place. But to me, the reason why I like this episode and will always defend it is the fact that it helped Eleven realize that she isn't just an invention created in a lab to do damage upon the enemy, but that she's a good person with compassion and love in her heart. She knows that the man she's about to kill did harm and basically killed her mother, but she doesn't want his kids to go through the same torment she is going through. Eleven proved to the audience from this that she will not become a machine like Dr. Brenner intended for her to become, and that she is someone who has compassion and empathy inside of her. Luckily, I'm not entirely alone in liking this episode, as there are others out there, but they think that it was placed in the worst spot in the season. They think had it been placed in between chapter 5 and 6, or took place after Eleven returns as a flashback between chapter 8 and 9, it would have worked better, 
but I think regardless of that, it wouldn't have helped the episode out at all. It would only flow well within the season had they just cut down the episode into maybe 20 minutes and dispersed the key events of the episode between chapter 5 and 7. You might think that this wouldn't work as the tones are drastically different from each other and that they would clash. This is true, however in season 4 of the show, we have the California plot, the Eleven plot, the Russia plot, and the Hawkins plot. Besides the California plot being a little half-baked, the other three worked really well, even with their clashing tones. It works because we know that all these storylines are going to lead us to the very end of the season, just like having Eleven going on this journey to meet her sister leads us back to Hawkins. The episode itself isn't amazing, but the storyline surrounding it very much is, and it really develops Eleven as a person. It gives her more of a reason to believe that she is a superhero. Despite many times where she questions herself, she can always look at the events that took place in The Lost Sister as proof that she is indeed one of the good ones.